Hello and welcome to this Leaning Aeronaut 7000 Boost Badminton Racket Review and Racket Test number 639. Okay, so let's start with the availability and the price of this racket. Not so easy to get hold of in the UK and Europe. Uh, prices are looking like they're going to be around 150 pounds, 155 pounds, so very much top end of the leaning range, similarly to the 3D Caliber 900i. Uh, we will be selling this at our racket sale site at www.badminton-racket.com dash review.com there's a link below our price is about 135 pounds which represents reasonably good value for money and we do ship out worldwide if we are out of stock do email us and we can get this on back order on a seven day lead time so at least it's available to people within europe and the uk in asia no problem to get hold of at all right let's talk more about this racket specs and then compare them to our own e-zone test results so let's start with the weight of this racket the overall weight here uh, it says it's 87 plus or minus one gram the overall weight test on the e-zone shows this racket to weigh 93.1 grams now that's a significant difference in weight even compared to other leaning rackets that's with the Jonix bg65 string in place um, we know strings can weigh about two, three pounds, but that's uh, a jump of, well, I suppose it says 87 plus or minus, still it's a jump of only five, six grams. So I'm not sure if the grip was involved with when leaning weighed it or not, but there is a, it's, it's a significantly heavier racket uh, than you may think. The balance point on this racket is 298, so just very slightly in this direction, but the E-Zone balance test shows this racket to be quite considerably head heavy. So much more head heavy in this direction towards the head. Now the shaft stiffness, according to Li Ning, is medium stiff. And according to the Badminton Racket Review E-Zone uh, stiffness test, this is a stiff racket with a stiff shaft. And that does feel quite stiff. Okay, uh, other information that will be helpful for you to know is this uh, maximum string tension on this racket is 32 pounds. We do not have a grip, but I would suspect a G4 or G5 grip on this racket. Um, racket is made in China and it is made of carbon fiber, and, uh, carbon fiber. And that pretty much is the deal with loads of these rackets. So, um, Nothing else really to talk about. I think all the other basic technical stuff on here is not going to mean a lot to most people. Uh, so no point in mentioning that. Um, design of this racket. Well, this does have a slightly more up feel, uh, sorry, upmarket feel about it. They've added a bit more color. They've gone a little bit further with the graphics. There's some, even in the interior head here, they've, there's a there's sort of change of color and it's faded in and faded out. So there's a lot more detailing on the design that we've seen on the other calibers and aeronauts. Um, so quite nice and quite suitable for an upmarket uh, racket. Not not quite to the level that Goosen or Kawasaki can produce. In actual fact, Kawasaki is un, un... There is no competition with Kawasaki design. I have to say it is the best in the world, but this is pretty nice and certainly very sturdy and very well made racket. Take a look at these close up images and see what you think for yourself. Okay, specifications are done. Let's go to the E zone. Okay, so before we start our E zone testing, 
what do you need to know about how we test our rackets? Well, first of all, we use the same shuttles, the Yonix AS30s on all tests. We string, restring all of the rackets with Yonix BG65 at 25 pounds tension. And it's the same player taking all of the shots. Right, now you have some basic understanding of how we test. Let's move on to the smash test. The smash shot that you're seeing here and for all of the rackets we've tested within Badminton Racket Reviews E-Zone, uh, we take generally six shots. We take the two highest uh, racket uh, shuttle speeds and we average those to give us a uh, overall speed. If those two uh, if those two readings are not within a certain percentage of each other, we then retake the entire test. This shot measures the shuttle speed uh, coming off the racket head, and also if you go across to the E zone, you'll see a picture similar to the one you're looking at on the screen now, which accompanies every single racket within the E zone, so that's nearly 650 or more rackets, with this kind of smash JPEG showing you the racket head speed, the shuttle speed, the distance, and the approximate repulsion of the racket. Okay, now we're going to do an E-Zone maneuver test. The maneuver shots was designed to tell us about the racket's acceleration abilities, its ability to shift from one direction to the other or shift quickly from nothing to full speed. It also tests the racket's um, aerodynamics. In this test, the player is sitting still with the racket and once the shuttle is fired, which we, and we measure the shuttle speed to ensure we have uh, consistency within the tests so it's coming at the same speed all the time or roughly the same speed as, as, as much as we can control anyway um, and then the player reacts once the shuttle is fired to hit the shuttle and we are measuring the head speed of the racket during that test Okay, so they're done. Now it's E-Zone control test time. The control test is a simplistic test. We've thought many, many times if there was any other better way of creating a test where we, we are uh, looking, focusing on the control of the racket and able to score it, and we so far haven't come up with anything better. So this, con this control test is essentially a test where we have 14 shots taken you're not seeing all the shots um, on the control video we, we generally film half or less of the shots taken the green bucket here scores maximum the gray scores slightly less and anything in the net or out scores nothing at all <laughs> So you've seen all the testing on this racket, you've heard the specifications, what do we really think of this racket at £150? Well, uh, unfortunately it, it, um, it does offer, given its weight, it's actually pretty good in defence and pretty good at drives, but that really is about it. It doesn't really offer an awful lot else. So overhead shots should be easier, smash should be easier, even control, which leaning are notoriously good at. Um, it's not the best. I mean, one of the things I would say about both Leaning and Yonex rackets, I would say more so Leaning 
Oh, the stability of the rackets are amazing. This is a very stable racket to play with, but the stability alone isn't going to get you very far. And we're talking about top of the range, so the expectations are quite high. I think that the 93 grams hasn't helped situation much. That weight, um, you do kind of feel that weight as you're playing with the racket. And I can, I can imagine that over long enough period of time, you are going to start to feel if you're used to lighter, faster rackets, the strain of that in the forearm, perhaps in the shoulder and the elbow too. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot more I can tell you about this other than it's it doesn't have any great, great strengths other than if you are in a flat rally situation or if you're being attacked and you need to defend, it is pretty good in those areas. In all other areas, it really is just average. Uh, we do talk about this in greater detail in the E-Zone review where we talk about the overhead ability, the drive, the, the, the smash, the um, defense, control, repulsion levels, and we go into greater detail. This really is a quick synopsis of the racket to give you a quick idea of what this racket is going to be like to purchase and play with. But £150, so let's just take that into consideration for a, one second. So let's just say you do not want an Abroz racket because you like brands and there's loads of people out there who are like that. So then you turn to Victor and you turn to Yonix and you turn to Li Ning. Now, Yonix, you're going to go straight to the Astrox 99, 88 perhaps. Uh, you're going to go to the Victor Aura Speeds or you're going to go to Li Ning 3D Caliber 900i. Uh, or if you really want an underdog, you might go towards the Adidas P8, the Wucht P8. Now, what I'd say is, I would say this racket is um, not similar in feel, but similar in per in performance. Even though it feels different to the Astrox 99, the performance levels are very similar. Um, and I didn't think much of the Astrox, Astrox 99. So it's similar to that. And I, if I was spending £150 and I was insistent I wanted a brand, then I would probably choose the the 3D Calibre 900i. Um, that would be my first choice. Or then I look at the Aura Speeds, but they're quick, they're snappy, they're lively frames. Um, I would look at the Adidas Vokth P8 which that plays better than this plays. Um, I would consider saving some money and maybe looking at the Guten Gravitas 7SR. I would look at the uh, Kawasaki King 8 or the Kawasa Kawasaki Honor S6. This would be quite low on my list. So clearly it's thumbs down for this racket. Doesn't have enough in the tank to really warrant a thumbs up and it doesn't even have a specific skill set that's outstanding so unfortunately um, despite it being top of the range and costing so much money it doesn't actually perform that well and um, there's loads I could list you 10 rackets straight off the top of my head I'd prefer to look at before I looked at this so that's my honest review on it however if you have played with this racket or you're gonna buy this racket or you're using this racket right now and you're an ESO member, leave a review on the E-Zone. If you're not an ESO member, leave a review on any of our social media platforms. And if you don't have any idea what I'm talking about when I talk about the E-Zone, there will be a video tour following this video to give you an idea what I'm talking about. Outside of that, we always have to thank you people um, for the support, for the comments, for the acknowledgements for the uh, constructive criticism so that we know how to improve what we're doing. Uh, slowly but surely the E-Zone is developing into a community of people where thousands of people visit every month and are getting real value from the feedback we're getting in what we're doing which is great to see. It's also very encouraging that we're reaching so many parts of the world. I mean I'm talking so you know, we, we're talking your, all European countries we've had emails from. We've had emails from Singapore, Hong Kong, Canada, America, Israel, Iran, India, Malaysia, uh, and, and, and so many more that I'm probably forgetting. So many areas of the world now that we're reaching. It's absolutely awesome. And it's because of you guys, your support. And we need to 
take a moment and thank you for that. So really, really thank you for it. Please keep liking, please keep sharing, and keep up the support. I think I'm done here with this racket today. I think I've been fairly conclusive in what I'm saying. I will see you now on the next video.